As we mentioned earlier on, the binomial theorem is a formula to help us do the binomial expansion. Okay, so here we are, the formula. Okay, now it may look very, very intimidating. Okay, for first time learner. Okay, and of course, if you're first time you're seeing this, you go, whoa, what is this formula? Okay, now, 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 it looks difficult. Okay, it looks difficult, but it's actually not that difficult. Okay, now here, what I, I have here, all right, for you is three different um, ways of presenting the binomial expansion. The three different ways, but they're all representing the same thing. They're all the binomial theorem. So let's take a look at one by one, okay, uh, one after another to see what's going on here. So this is the binomial expansion raised to the power of n. Okay, so n is an unknown number, okay, positive integer. So, how do we expand this? Well, this numbers here, nc0, nc1, nc2, nc3, and so on and so forth, these numbers here are known as the binomial coefficients, okay, which we earlier talked about um, in the Pascal's triangle. We, we can actually get this, this coefficients okay, using the Pascal's triangle. But of course, as we mentioned earlier on as well, that to use the Pascal triangle to do a uh, binomial expansion of uh, you know higher powers, it's really quite tedious. Okay, we've got to construct a triangle to say power ten, and then I think you know it's really uh, not worth the time. Okay, so of course um, we we have a better way to help help us find what is nc zero, nc one, all these uh, binomial coefficients. Okay, so let's put aside the binomial coefficients first and take a look at how the formula works. Now this is the first term in the binomial expansion, okay, A and the second term B, right? There must be two, right? So A and B. So what happens here is this. Alright, in the expansion, the first term, alright, which is A, will have the full power N, while B has zero power. Okay, now as we move on to the next term, A will lose one power while B will gain one power. Okay, now B has power one. Alright, as we move on to the next term, as you can see very clearly now that A loses one more power and B gains one more power. Okay, now this relationship will go on. Okay, we'll go on. A will continue losing one power and B will continue gaining one power and so on and so forth until the last term where A has got no more power, zero. Okay, and of course, B will have the full power N. Okay, so this is how we do our binomial expansion using the binomial theorem. This is the formula itself. Now, the next question that you must have been asking would be, you know, okay, this, this sounds easy. I mean, A has got full powers and, you know, slowly it's transferred the power from A to B and lastly, B will have the full power. But how am I going to find NC0 and NC1 and NC2? Well, very simple. Look at your calculator. Okay, you have your in your calculator this function, NCR function. Okay, so uh, we will use the calculator to help us calculate uh, the binomial coefficients. Alright, now, next, we then move on to the next second version of this same formula. Alright, there's actually nothing different. The only thing different is um, the NC0 and the NC1, the binomial coefficients. But basically, in some textbooks, as you will see, um, some textbooks write NC0 as N0 in this, um, you know, column vector form. Okay? So this is as actually NC0. This is actually NC1. This is actually NC2. This is actually NC3. They are the same. So uh, do not be intimidated by the look of it. Okay? If you happen to see this in another textbook, well, they, they mean the same thing. Let's move on to the third version of the same formula. Okay? This is so what is going on here. Uh, very simple nc0 is always 1 okay now if you remember what we mentioned about uh, what we mentioned on in the Pascal's triangle the first number in the Pascal's triangle is always 1 the last number is always a 1 okay starts with a 1 ends with a 1 so this is the first coefficient 
and therefore it's always a 1 even if your n is 10 10 c0 is 1 100 c0 is still 1 okay so the first coefficient the first binomial coefficient is always a 1 alright likewise the last one is always a 1 so in this case we, we really don't have to write down nc0 okay because we must know that nc0 is a 1 now and of course b to the power of 0 is also a 1 okay as you will learn in the law of indices that any number raised to the power of 0 is 1 so 1 multiplied by 1 multiplied by a to the power n is obviously a to the power n okay the 1 basically is um, not important all right insignificant there okay um, that goes to say that it's the same for the last term okay ncn is a 1 and a to the power of 0 is also 1 and therefore we only have the last term as b to the power of n and of course everything in between remains the same as what we have talked about earlier on in uh, in this example so this is what the binomial theorem looks like okay and of course in the next example the first example um, we will use the binomial theorem to help us expand a binomial expansion